as you can see, so I've started building this kit from, so this kit from um, Ben Eater. Uh, um, he built an 8-bit computer from scratch. And basically, and you had a plan somewhere. Wait a second. This is your plan. Yeah, so I just, I just did step one, and, and I thought it would be easy. And I, and then I, <laughs> so I recommend watching those videos if, if you want to, like, see how to build it and everything. But I, and so what I've done is I've put a, uh, a one mega ohm resistor where, where, where it should be 100K. And so, the LED was supposed to flash because it's a clock, but we didn't see it flash, it was just always on. And I tried to debug, and I was debugging for a long, long time. But now it's flashing! And now it's flashing! When we discovered it, that it was flashing all along. My resistor was just so large that it... It was just flashing very quickly, so we, it looked like it was burning constantly, right? Is that it? Yeah. Now I kind of see another problem. Why is it called a clock? That's what I don't understand. Because it's a clock that synchronizes the whole computer. Which part? This whole this whole construction? Yeah, this whole circuit. Now, oh, I didn't realize that. So the the circuit. I'll add a, a bit more to the clock. I so right now I just have like this e-stable clock, but and, and all I can do is actually control the speed of it. So I have this potentiometer here. You can see if I twist it this way, you can see it's. It's flashing more frequently, more vigorously. <laughs> but this also means that everything in the rest of the computer will go faster, right? If you... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, also, I'll add a bit more to the clock where where, where you can um, like hit a little push button to actually pulse the clock instead of pulsing the clock automatically. Now it looks like it's burning constantly, but you're saying it's still flashing, right? Ah. This is a debounced button, so what? Are you going to turn it on? Wait, my uh, power cable has dropped. Okay, so. Are you going to turn it on? Uh, yeah, but before I do that, I, I want to show you why I, why I need this, and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna actually just play a little bit from, from this video, and then, and then I'm gonna show you, um, that it works. Okay. So in the last video, we used a 555 timer here to build this little clock circuit, and so we have our pulsing clock output on pin three of the triple five timer, and we can control the speed using this uh, potentiometer. And so that's great, but there might be times when we want to manually control the clock, and we want to be able to just push a button each time we want the clock to advance one, one or we want our, our computer to advance one clock tick. Is that it's, um, is that it, they bounce and they, and so, so it might actually flick on and off for, for a little bit before it settles, and so, in fact, I was going to talk about that. And so it'll, it'll close and then bounce and then close again. Or maybe it'll bounce a couple times. Oh, 
Oh, there's something. Yeah, look at that. So that, that definitely bounced. Uh, right. So this is what I mean. So, <laughs> so this is what I mean by all of this ridiculous video business. But I, uh, I don't know why I was trying all this just to get to this moment. But I, <laughs> but basically what what I'm doing this for is this because you know you can, as you can see right here, you only push the button once and then. And then you can see those contacts actually bounced, so you can see for like, I don't know, I'm gonna read this. For like 3 milliseconds, 3.5 milliseconds, about that. They, it act, nanoseconds, actually. 3.5 3 nanoseconds, it actually like flicked on and off for a second. And so it's, it's, it's so, and so you're actually get a couple of clock pulses. So, instead of one clock pulse, you get, yeah. Three clock pulses, which, as he explained, also he get that can get really frustrating. So what have I done? I built this debouncing circuit. Yes, that's actually what it's called. So this button, basically, what this timer does is it, is it will actually keep the button. It will keep the button on so that it doesn't bounce. It will keep the button on for a, for a second. Before it switches off, so, so, so it wouldn't, so this wouldn't happen, like, like, it would switch on and off for a couple of nanoseconds, so, so, this is what I'm talking about. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, it took so long before I actually turned this thing on, so let's try to turn this thing on. Yeah, this is our A-stable. So you can see as I push the button, but you can see that it actually takes a second before it turns off. Another thing I can do is press it multiple times. And it only turns off after a certain point. So one thing that I that I can do now for it to seem a little bit more like a like a not 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 this ridiculous that that it's just whenever the button is pushed it's 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 on to to make it seem more like that I'm gonna I'm gonna actually uh, put a less of a strong capacitor in there so if I so this is a one microfarad capacitor, so I think I can actually put in a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor instead. And so now what I can do is I can put this thing into here, and then this into here. So hopefully this is good. I might have got my capacitor the wrong way around, but I think that this will work. Yeah, you can see that every time I push the button, every time I bash the button, you can see that, that, that LED turns on. And hopefully it doesn't actually bounce anymore. So it, <laughs> so you can see <laughs> I have built, um, a bi-stable circuit now. So this... But it's not turned on. It's not turned on. And you're good. So you can see this is our e-stable circuit. I'll leave it running. Our monostable circuit, remember, there we go, there's our momentary button. And we debounced it using a timer. I also have a slide switch now. This is the thing that's new. So I can, um, do it. And it's debounced Can you again. use your left hand? Because I can't, I can't see anything behind your hand. I'll, I'll, yeah, this is much better. Yeah, I'm I'm right-handed, so I can't, so I can't use it as much. Okay, there we go. So you can see we have our A-stable circuit here running. I have our monostable circuit. Can you show here. that with your left hand also? Okay, A-stable circuit here. 
monostable circuit here and bistable circuit here. Nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do, this is the last thing I'm gonna do today. And it wouldn't involve any cutting, that's good. Um, the last thing that I'm gonna do today is add, is add some logic to actually choose which one I'm gonna, which one of these three I'm gonna use. Which one of these actually the two I'm gonna use, and the third one is will be the select for the for the first two. So, so this is the last thing that I'm gonna do today, and tomorrow I'm gonna do the registers in the arithmetic logic unit. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so uh, basically, I completed the module. Yeah! <laughs> the module in one day. Uh, the module in one day. Uh, well, yeah, I, I was going to complete the module in one day. This was kind of the easiest. So, yeah, but it wasn't that easy. It wasn't that easy. I got stuck along the way, so I finished it by adding this logic to combine the three signals we had previously. We have this A stable signal. Is this this is the 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 schematic? The yeah, we have a the circuit. Yeah, we have the A st stable, a pulse which which uh, just turned on and off uh, automatically. We also have a manual pulse that turns on where I push the button and turns off whenever I release it. And and we also have a little select here. So I have, uh, by the way, this is debounced using one of these timers and this is also debounced using one of these timers. So you can see that I can Turn the switch on and off. Sorry for the rogue out of focus. Um, you can see I can turn the switch on and off. And there we go. Now I combine these three into a single thing. So what I so what I've done is I have done this. So I. I have this little thing here, thingy, that I can plug in. Oh, do you know what? I have them swapped. Yeah, you can see now it's flashing. So when it's on, when the select is on, then it, then it's just whatever this AC will post. Is gonna be so so it just flashes automatically and when I turn the switch off you can see that it, it's only stopped when I push the button and you've achieved this by adding yeah. logic by gates the way, logic gates right yeah so this is the circuit I have a little circuit here so this is I have a <laughs> I have a little circuit short and small okay Okay, a stable pulse. So, so this is actually quite a simple circuit. It might seem complicated, but it's actually quite a simple circuit. So you can see on my a stable pulse and my select. So you can see, so, so our select, our select is gonna go over here and it's gonna end with the a stable pulse. So if the select is on, then it's gonna be the a stable pulse. Otherwise, it's gonna be nothing. And then our manual pulse. It's gonna go and with the inverted version of the select. So if the select goes low, then it'll, then it'll be the manual pulse. Otherwise, it wouldn't be would be nothing. Do you see that? Only one of these is on at the same time. That means that we can or them together to get with whichever one is active. Sorry, you might notice this extra halt thing. This is actually something that we'll use later in the computer because, you know, the halt, you know, the when the computer is going to execute a program, the program will, may or may not halt at a certain point. And that means the computer will stop doing its thing and then the, and then this halt signal will, will turn high and so, and so then this will turn low, this, this, this signal will turn low. And so when I end the 
result with the halt, no, nothing is going to happen. So I, so I just connected a little jumper here to demonstrate that. So I, so I can bring this hot. Hi, actually, this would be better noticed if I uh, turn it a stable. Now it's just floating. And now you can see it doesn't matter what I do. Uh, it's halted. Uh, one thing I'll do is I'll just get. I'll just get rid of this jumper and, and instead, just for right now, I'm gonna change it, change it late. Later, I'll get a little green jumper here. And then connect that as my halt. And for not right now, I'm just gonna connect it to ground. There we go. Wow. And that finishes our clock module. Day one.